Welcome back to Little Ian Rose. My name is Summer Noel, and today we're going to do a really fun cup. Um, we are going to do my version of the shipwreck. This is going to be more of like an old naval ship or maybe like Titanic with a stormy sea. Um, there's a lot of shipwrecks out there right now, and there's a lot of ocean beach themes. Uh, but this is going to kind of be its own little thing. Uh, I showed you guys how to do the stormy sea on a small charm. Um, in my Facebook group, and we're just going to kind of do that same method, but we're going to do it on a larger scale on a tumbler. Um, so here we go. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me, guys. I am always getting over something. My little germ monkeys um, always bring something home. So you can see to the left of me, I've, I've already pre-prepared a bunch of these white, I'm not, sorry, these painter's tapes. Um, you want to, when you'd use the painter's tape on top of a spray painted cup. So this cup has been prepped and spray painted. You don't want to put this tape on and then leave it on for days and days and days. You don't want to let this project sit because the longer this tape sits, the more likely it is to rip off the um, spray paint underneath it. So basically what you want to do is do this kind of in a swift motion, put the tape on, do your inks and paints in between, and remove the tape immediately. Um, because the long, like I said, the longer it sits, the longer, um, the better, more and worse, higher chance and higher risk you have of lifting the tape off, I mean the paint off the cup. So we are gonna go ahead and take these sections and we're gonna go down from the lip just a touch and we're gonna lay them down and we're just gonna go around the cup. They're all kind of cut at different lengths. They're not all exact. This is not meant to be an exact science. Um, so we have just a little bit of fun. So this way when we get to the end, if one it needs to be a little longer or a little shorter, it can be. Um, this is just meant to give us, start giving us our planks for our ship. So you see as I go, I'm just laying it down, making sure it's nice and smooth to the cup. And that's a good little distance right there. It looks like it's going to be just about perfect. And it is for a piece of tape. So here we go for our last one. Nope. I'm going to trim just a touch off. The last one in between is always the trickiest because you want to make sure you have a little edge between each one. So now what you want to do is start opposite of that one. So if that one is in line, now you want to start this one in the middle. So this is actually a Pilsner cup. Um, it's just going to be a fun different cup design that I've used than I've used previously. Um, I want to show you guys different types of cups to work on. You don't always have to be working on skinny or on a 32 modern curve or anything. So this is a fun Pilsner style cup. And we're going to be doing our stormy sea with the ship. All right, so there we go. You want to make sure that those do lay down flat so when we do ink and spray paint, it doesn't get up underneath the edge. I'm going to rub down really nice and firm. needs to be a little bit longer so we're going to select one that's just a touch longer go and you can see how easily that tape lifts away from that spray paint as long as it doesn't sit there too long so i'm just positioning it to make sure there's a little line there and a line here in between and we're just going to keep working our way down the cup doing that process All right, so now we have our tape all on there. Um, you don't really wanna be a perfectionist about it. You wanna have fun with it. Um, like I said, you just leave a little bit down from the top and cut as you go to fit the size that you need. Make sure the tape is pushed down in all the corners. Make sure all the little edges where maybe you have to work it together are nice and pushed down. Um, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using um, silver lilac and black, flat black. And I'm gonna be spraying kind of bursts of sprays all around in between these. And I'm gonna do the black and kind of 
bring the silver lilac up the sides mixed with some white. So you, your, my spray paint method is going to be the silver and black kind of up here in small bursts all over the place because we're going to alcohol ink over the top of it as well. And then down here, we're going to do black on the bottom and then work our way up to the gray. And then I'm going to do a light coating of some white over the top of all of that. Um, but we don't want to completely cover that up with the white. We just want to do a light coating. Um, and you will see why as we work with our epoxy going into that part. All right, so I'm going to take this outside and I'm going to spray paint it and I'll be right back. All right, guys, um, I want to show you guys my spray, spray paint technique here because you guys always ask and I never film this part because I'm always rushing. Uh, but we got Miss Becca on the camera, so it's a little bit jiggly. Sorry, we don't have it on the tripod. Um, you're going to hold it away. You don't want this to be up close. You want small bursts. Just move your, just slowly move around the cup in small bursts. Nothing heavy. Okay, and I'm now going to switch to the flat black. Again, small bursts around the cup. This is um, a Krylon color. So the Krylon is actually, I generally don't like Krylon, but it works good for this because it's not going to do a heavy, heavy black like the Rust-Oleum would. It's just going to give you a nice soft finish as opposed to a really hard black like a Rust-Oleum would. Okay, now we're going to switch back to the gray. We're just going to slowly layer until we feel like all the parts are filled okay if it oversprays into the bottom part just keep spinning and doing small bursts and back to the black should have kept them in order again we're racing the light sorry guys just wanted to make sure you guys got to see this technique all right so i feel like the top is now completely covered now the Krylon, I'm going to do it on the bottom, is going to be the black. Whoops, sorry, I lowered the cup. You're going to hear all the farm animals. <laughs> we're outside on the farm today. Okay, and we're going to work our way up with the gray. And then over that, we're gonna do just a soft white over just a little dusting of white over that whole thing. All right, just like that, guys. That's what you're looking to get. Bring it up, because is that good for the camera? You're getting a good shot. It's almost kind of ombres the black into the gray with a little bit of white. All right, let's go back inside. All right, we're going to now take up this. Uh, we are back inside. No more moo cows. Um, we're back inside. We're going to slowly remove this. I'm going to be real careful with my tweezers to just get the tape up, but without scratching that paint underneath and pull this up. We're just, it's a slow, tedious process, and you want to be very, very careful so you don't scratch that white paint underneath. And just get that tape pulled up and out of there and off to the side. That's going to start shipping, giving us our ship, the planks of the ship. All right, so here we go. All right, so now that we've got the planks all laid out, we are going to use black alcohol ink. This is going to be the Ranger Pitch Black. I'm going to put him down inside of one of these little measuring cups, just a few drops. You don't need a lot. Um, we're going to add kind of basically what I would call like the big bolts that are going to be holding these wood planks to the, uh, as the, holding the planks onto the ship. You, if you don't have one of these fun little silicone tools, 
You can use a toothpick. You could use the um, the end of like a silicone tool. Uh, really anything that has a nice little fine point for you. And we're going to just take the black and we're going to dot the black just like this all the way around the cup. And this is basically going to be the bolts that hold the plank to the ship. And we're going to do this all the way around. Just two little dots. The silicone tool works perfect for this. Um, we also have dotting tools, um, the metal dotting tools. If you have those, they work beautifully for making the perfect little dots. Helps you not get too much ink. You, if you do, if you get too much ink, you're gonna they're gonna run and get like drippy and drip down the side of the cup. And you de that you de that is something you definitely want to avoid because it's really hard to fix that once it goes. So just nice little dots, working our way around working our way down the cup. All right, guys, uh, we are ready to do our first layer of epoxy. This is actually going to be a clear layer. So what I did, I've got my chemical respirator on and my nitrile gloves already because my epoxy is already mixing. Um, we are going to actually just do a clear layer of epoxy over the top of this because I want to seal all of this in, basically like a hang method. It's going to be a very, very thin layer of epoxy. Um, I have put a matte finish spray over the top of the what are going to be our little bolt dots that hold it down like our little ship lap for the side of our sailor ship. Um, and uh, we want to seal this all in and then over the top of that, tomorrow once we've got a nice nice glaze on it, we will go through and add our beautiful swirls and twirls for our ocean. So I'm going to take, um, I'm going to turn off our epoxy mixer. It's been uh, getting our epoxy all stirred up for us. This is uh, a very fun little product that you can find on our website. It is an epoxy mixer. It's very easy to use, very easy to clean. I'm just going to wipe all the little epoxy, extra epoxy off the weight that we put inside. I'm going to clean that off with a baby wipe. So it's very, very easy to use. You just clean the pin off of the baby wipe. It's just what it basically is, is a wonderful little product that you can take a small cup or a large cup. I use the large eight ounce cups from Walmart because I'm usually mixing for more than one cup. Um, I have now, I think this is my fourth cup, I have done the same batch of epoxy on. Um, so it just keeps it rolling so that it doesn't set up. It gives you a little bit more work time as well with it as it keeps going and going and going. Now we have just the perfect amount. This is all cleaned off with a baby wipe. And we've got just enough to do kind of like a hang method version um, of epoxy onto this cup. I'm gonna just use my fingers. I usually use a brush, but I want this to be a nice thin application. So I'm gonna use my fingers. I'm still using the turner uh, because it does, I do, I do like, it's holding the weight for me and I can really see the work. And it is going to be a slightly thicker, it is actually going to be a slightly thicker layer than a regular hang method. So the, turn, the turner will help it still self-level just a bit. Um, and like I said, it's kind of like a hang method, but it's, it's a little bit, little bit thicker than a hang method. So the, being on the turner is just definitely going to help it stay nice and smooth and self-leveled.
Love you, babe. All right, guys, we are now down to the fun part. We're gonna get our chemical mask on. And we're gonna get started here. Sorry, it's gonna be a little bit hard to hear me. <clears throat> we are working in a wide open space today, but um, I'm still gonna wear my chemical mask just in case, because once we start putting some stuff on here, I'm gonna be right on top of this and I don't wanna breathe it in. Uh, we are gonna be working with black epoxy ink. We are going to be working with gray uh, gunmetal mixative, and we are going to be working with white epoxy ink. The difference between inks, uh, epoxy inks and alcohol inks is there's no alcohol in epoxy ink. So they're a little bit different. They won't, some epoxies do not like alcohol. So it just depends on whatever brand you're working with. And we're also going to be working with white acrylic paints. It doesn't matter what brand you use. Um, and then also we're going to be using a heat gun today. Uh, we're using the heat gun because we need to, we want to move some of this epoxy around and we want to keep our respirator on. So we are going to be using our heat gun to move the epoxy around. And the reason we are using the white uh, acrylic paint when we do is to make sure that that epoxy happens to be a little bit thicker and gives us kind of the waves of the ocean. Uh, we're kind of doing our stormy sea look now we're going to do the stormy ocean on the bottom of this cup. Um, I've got my epoxy mixing over here now. It's rolling along uh, in the epoxy mixer. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get started first with our black. We're going to put a few couple of drops of black for our black part of the sea in there. Then we're going to do our mixative. This is going to be our silver gray. We're gonna put our gunmetal silver in this one. Then we're gonna leave one that's gonna be clear and the other one is going to have just a touch of white acrylic paint. And the reason we're using, like I said, the reason we're using the acrylic paint is because we do want it to be slightly thicker. Get all the toothpick because it looks like a little clump went in there. We do not definitely don't want to clump. There we go. Pull that out. Okay. So we have our black, our gray, our white, our oh, sorry, our clear, and our white. So now we are going to uh, go ahead and get this started. Actually, what we're going to do is we are going to get started by putting a layer of epoxy on the whole cup. It's gonna basically be like a hang method. Just, just so we have a nice smooth surface on everything else. I had to do a little special work on this one, guys. Um, even though I covered it up so no dust or bugs got into it, somehow a bug still infiltrated my little uh, tub tent and got on this cup. So I had to use my little, little tool to file them off and get them out of there. They make you crazy, those are the darn little mosquitoes. All right, guys, um, it is kind of cold today, so you're going to hear my heater running pretty, pretty aggressively in the background. Um, we are going to keep working on our shipwreck stormy seas cup. Um, 
it is ready for the next coat. Just off camera here, I've got my epoxy warming and we're gonna use our epoxy mixer to get started, um, to get the epoxy going. Uh, we're gonna be using black uh, epoxy ink. That's gonna be for the black bottom. Then we're gonna be using a gray acrylic uh, color. It's not any particular gray color, it's just a cheapy one. I believe I got it in a kit from Ross. Um, then we are gonna be using, so that's this one. Um, then we're gonna be using a silver. I thought it might be kind of fun to add a little bit of shimmer in there. Um, this is meant to be a girl's cup, so I'm not worried about being shimmer. And we're gonna just use a generic white. I would buy big batches of white. Um, so those are gonna be the colors that are gonna be mixed into our epoxies. Um, I'm choosing to use acrylic paint because I want it to be more opaque as opposed to transparent. And if you use just inks, um, they tend to be more transparent. Now, I'm not worried about the black one because we have the bottom sprayed black. Um, and so the bottom, the black will, are, will pretty much stay black. And then as you can see, it's kind of with the, that spray paint, the way that we did it, um, the black will kind of ombre up naturally up the top. So, but like I said, the black can be an ink because the bat, bl bottom is already spray painted black. So if it is a transparent ink, it's okay because it's going to be see-through. But as we go up, we want the color to kind of change. So the acrylic paint is going to be what's going to kind of sh shift it as we go up. Now, when you're mixing your epoxies, you want it to be about a 10 to 1 ratio. Um, when I say that, I mean you want 10 parts of epoxy to one part acrylic ink paint. Um, if you get too far away from that, um, you're going to get uh, gummy. It might take a really long time for that epoxy to set up um, or not set up at all. So you do want to be careful about the ratio of how much acrylic paint you pour into your epoxy. You'll see here I'm going to use very, very little acrylic paint as we go. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get our epoxy started um, in our epoxy mixer. You can see it's, it's uh, in a larger cup. There's a weighted pin inside there. Um, this is a product that I designed. It is a little machine that holds this cup and spins it around and mixes my epoxy for me so I don't have to do it. So some people have never seen these, so I wanted to show this off. Um, if you are part of my Facebook group, you've probably seen it in our lives that we do in the Facebook group when we teach live. Uh, this is the epoxy mixer. Uh, that weighted pin goes around and just mixes up the epoxy for me. Uh, I just turn it on and go, and it's a removable cup. Um, I, you can mix really large batches as long as the epoxy is still moving. It's kind of like cement in a cement mixer. As long as it's moving, it's not going to firm up on you. I mean, eventually it will, but you have a lot more work time with it. Um, and then I also have my epoxy warmer. I had this off to the side. This is all these things are on our website. You guys, um, all the tools that you see me working with, um, these little tools you see us, like we, I said, you can see these, we've, uh, these have gone out in our swag bags. The turners have gone out in swag bags. The epoxy mixer can go out in a swag bag. Um, all of our little products we send out in swag. So we basically put the epoxy in there and set it for about three minutes and it runs for about three minutes and you'll see the epoxy will start going clear and that's when you know it's ready to go. Um, at this point, I could be working on other cups or working on other tutorials. I do actually have um, other little projects that I'm working on. So I'm gonna let this run for three minutes and go and finish those projects and come right back. All right, so I've got my chemical mask on. I forgot to have it on earlier. Um, it was a slip of the chemical mask because uh, we have actually changed my filming location to be a more open aired space. That's why it's a little bit colder. Um, and, you know, stray glitters got on there. Um, so I'm not as cautious, but you always do want to wear your chemical mask when working with it. So. I immediately realized when I pushed stop on the camera that I didn't have my chemical mask on, mainly because I had my headphones on, and it feels like I'm wearing my chemical mask, so it is on now, and I've got my nitrile gloves on, and we're going to go ahead and stop our counter. We've been turning away over here, and we're going to pull the cup out, and we're just going to pour a little bit into each one. Mm -hmm. 
I'm planning on having leftovers. I am ready on the sidelines with some uh, beautiful mold to do a sunset mermaid mold, which I will do if they have this extra leftover epoxy. So with the black, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two drops or three, three drops of black. Get that stirred in. Again, it's going to be a very transparent black because it's the ink. But like I said, because the bottom is already painted black, we're not too worried about it being transparent. I'm going to keep, uh, I have a little baby wipe off to the side. I'm going to leave these, clean them off as we go. And then our next one is our gray, just our flat gray. That's kind of a lot, but ooh, maybe too much on that one. Because like I said, the 10 to 1 ratio. But we want this one to definitely be opaque. So we're going to stir that in there really, really well. And you can see it's not transparent like the black one was. It's definitely an opaque gray. That's exactly what we're looking for. Okay, clean that off with the baby wipe. Keep them ready. There you go. Okay, then we've got the silver. We just need a little drop of silver. This one was just to add maybe a little shimmer to the gray. Okay, I'm gonna have to work fast. Okay. And now we're gonna work with our white. Our white is gonna be our whitewash for a storm. Again, you can see that all these colors are more opaque than transparent. Okay. We have our heat gun set up. Um, I'm going to use the heat gun as, as opposed to a torch on this tumbler because I want to be able to move the colors of the epoxy where I need them. So we're going to start with our darkest. And as you can see, I'm going to keep this epoxy rolling so that if I need, when we come to it, if we need more, it's always there. Uh, if we need more to add to the cup, which I don't think we have quite a bit here. Uh, but I'm keeping it moving so that we can make some beautiful molds out of it if, when we're finished. We're going to go ahead and drizzle this black along the bottom. Move it around, let it go to the bottom. I'm just catching the drips as they fall. I'm going to use the coffee. I missed a few. You can scrape those up. You know me, I don't waste anything. Put it on the cup. Scrape it up and put it on the cup. Workspace mildly clean. I'm going to go ahead and wipe that up. Okay. Work on that quickly, Ernie. Should have done this before. There we go. So now that black is going to just roll along. Coat the bottom, keep it smooth. 
The black is just going to get our cup started with its first color of epoxy. It's our dark bottom of the sea where the Kraken lives. Okay. Okay, now we're going to dive in, clean off my glove. Now we're going to dive in and we're going to drizzle in our gray. Some of it will go over the grit black. Some of it will come all the way up to the white. We want, we want a lot of texture in the cup. In the middle, I'm just going to make sure there's no holes. But anywhere it's in the black, I'm just going to let it do its thing. Just the middle that I'm working through. Okay? So all this that's in the black, I'm just going to let it go. It'll roll and do its own thing. Okay? Now we're going to move to our silver. This one's just going to be for kind of like an accent. I like that with a little bit of shimmer in it. All right, now we're going to add our white. Our white is going to be our whitewash. It's going to be mainly up at the top and down at the bottom. And the, one, the white one is the one we're going to use the heat mainly on to push and move it and get it moving um, so that it acts like whitewash. But we're not going to do it right away. We're going to let the epoxy set up just a bit. While that does, I'm going to play with my molds over here. So we are going to go ahead and start adding our whitewash. Some areas will add a little extra. Some areas will be thinner. We don't want it to be too exact. I'm going to save that last little bit in the cup just in case. So I'm going to put this on time lapse and I'm going to let this sit for probably about 20 minutes and we'll come back. All right, guys, this is now starting to set up. Uh, it's probably been about 25 minutes. You guys kind of saw me play with my little mold down here. Uh, those are going to be absolutely gorgeous keychains. Um, I will probably finish those out in my uh, Facebook group. 
So if you want to keep learning tips, tricks, and all kinds of little hacks and all kinds of lots of cool stuff, join my Facebook group. It is in the link in the uh, description below this tutorial. Uh, the colors that I used uh, for those mermaid tails, because I wanted them to kind of look like a sunset, were Caspian and Archimedes, and those are both on our website. Okay, so now I'm going to take my heat gun, and we're going to play right here in the whitewash. The bottom is absolutely amazing, so I'm not going to touch that. Uh, but we're going to play kind of in this whitewash and try to push it and move it. We're not going to use a torch at all. The purpose of using the heat gun is really only to move some of this white to make it look like water spraying up on the side of the boat, okay? That is what our goal is. And then we're going to start tipping and moving and tipping and moving. And I'll put that on high speed because that's kind of boring to watch. Um, and get the exact splash that we want. So here we go. down, so what we want to go up. We're just going to keep pushing it, pushing it around to so get the perfect spray of water. So now I'm just going to stop my heat gun and we're going to let it move up and down the cup. And you can start seeing it do some really, really cool formations. Since this is such a nice large pilsner, we have a lot of space to work with. We can come way up on the shipwreck. And then let it move, let it sit for just a second. Let it figure itself out. Looks like it's trying to get a little fish out of there. Let's get rid of that. Baby wipe that off my fingers. A little fish out of there. Get that out. Okay. Okay, let's tip it up. One more tip. I am super glad I added that, that metallic silver. It's adding like the perfect definition between the two grays. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, here we go. It's looking good. And now we're going to tip it down. You want to keep your silicone mat there in case anything drips off the bottom. A couple little fish eyes in there. We're fixing those as we go.
Looking gorgeous. Okay, one more last tip up to get some of that silver to come up towards that whitewash. And then we will probably be done. Let it sit. There we go. Let me bring it back in frame for you guys. Just let, we're just letting some of that silver resettle. I'm going to maybe wipe the thing off my little finger. Beautiful. All right. All right. So now we're going to place our G cow. And we've got them all cut out. We're going to put an, a big, beautiful anchor on this guy. We'll put them right. We want to make them nice up and right. There, we're going to press down from the middle. Work our way out. Okay, peel back. Should all stay. Gorgeous. I chose the um, kind of coppery colored uh, anchor because it stood out against all the gray. I didn't want it to just be a black and gray cuff. Um, I wanted to have a little bit of definition and some texture to it. And I thought that coppery was really, really pretty. Um, and then the words are going to be in black. Here we go. We're going to be using our squeegee to make sure that we get a good contact. We're reusing the same um, piece of transfer tape just to uh, conserve. And you can see it pulls right up nice and easy off there. Okay, and we're gonna turn the cup just a touch. We have, uh, we're just using two silicone sticks to hold it in place. And now we're gonna move this guy in. Oop, stuck down just a little early. We're gonna move this guy in right about here. He's gonna overlap just a little bit on the bottom of that anchor. And we're gonna press him right here and make sure he's down. Then we're gonna slowly work our way across the cup, working through the words. All right. We're using our squeegee just to get down nice and good contact to the cup. Beautiful, beautiful. We are going to pull that away. It says the anchor holds in spite of the storm. Beautiful, beautiful cup. All right, we're going to go ahead and get this guy under epoxy and we'll be almost finished. All right, welcome back, you guys. Here we go. You can see that the um, tumbler has a flat finish to it. Um, that's because I did a matte, uh, clear, matte clear spray paint over the top, uh, mainly because I took the cup with my bare hands a little bit, and I didn't want my fingerprints, the oils were calling it, and the anchor was a very large decal that was kind of shiny. And sometimes when you get, like, the big, chunky glitters um, that have a uh, big surface, uh, like this cup right here, you see this is pressed in. He's got some big pieces. You, um, that those big shiny um, pieces will repel the epoxy because it has nothing to grab onto. So we've done a clear coat of uh, clear spray paint over the top of this guy um, to make sure that the epoxy has something to really grab a hold of. Um, yes, I am wearing pink polka dot um, onesie pajamas right now. It's freezing cold here. Um, you can see that this Pilsner fits perfectly great um, on this cup. Uh, this is the Lillian Rose Turner. It has no problem. It's not touching anywhere, rubbing anywhere. It's just going along. Um, uh, so we're going to go ahead and start applying. We've got our epoxy mixer mixing our epoxy. It's been going for about three minutes. 
Um, because it is actually a rainy, cold day here, I had the part B, the, the, the thicker part, uh, sitting on our, my warmer for about four minutes um, so that it kind of got it a little bit more fluid and blended a little bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn this off and we will get set up. All right, so I've got, I poured out some of the epoxy that we're going to be using. Actually, I took too many cups there. I poured out from here to here to, and now I want to keep this epoxy moving. You have a more work time with your epoxy if you keep it moving. So I've got another cup I'm going to be uh, epoxying here shortly. So I'm just going to let that go ahead and keep rolling there. And we're going to start applying this epoxy to our sailor ship our Stormy Seas Sailor Ship. Kind of like the Titanic. My, kind of my inspiration was the Titanic. I almost put a phrase from the Titanic on it, uh, but uh, my uh, workers here said, nobody is gonna know that but you, um, unless they were like an uber fan of the movie, or I mentioned it. And uh, so we went with this beautiful phrase. Um, it does suit the cup beautifully, but you guys can choose whatever phrase you want to put on there. This is just kind of, me having fun and picking something that I like that went on it. This is more about teaching you the fun look of doing the ship lap um, and the stormy seas because I've shown you guys the stormy seas um, over the last couple months but in a small form for like necklace charms and things and keychains uh, but I've never done it on a full size cup uh, so I thought you guys have kind of been asking for that so I will do that. I've actually got another one You've seen me do on charms with colors, uh, like a colored sunset, the stormy colored sunset. Uh, I will be doing that as well in a tutorial. Uh, but these things take quite a bit to film. And so just one at a time, just rolling along, doing as much as I can, getting as much out to you guys as I can, as fast as I can. So you can see I'm just focusing, making sure every area has epoxy on it and now I'm going to focus kind of along the top edge here focus more on the bottom there for a while you want to coat the entire cup bottom to top you cannot patch a cup so if you do a repair on a cup you have to re like if you have to sand one little area you're going to have to go back in and uh, do a whole layer on the whole cup um, because you will be able to see where you went and just put that little bit of epoxy um, epoxy does not hide itself well. Even though it's clear, it shows every little dent and ding and things. So you got to make sure you get it on there real nice and smooth and do a full coat. All right, so it looks like we are good all the way along the rim. Now we are going to get the bottom. The bottom is really beautiful. Um, I, I was going to cover the bottom, but I uh, with black glitter, but I think I'm going to leave it because the little bit of swirl that went down there ended up turning beautiful and it's just an extra accent to this gorgeous cup. These pills are really fun cups to design. Uh, they look cool done as baseball bats. Um, I really like it for this shape cup for the, I just like, and it's got the handle. Um, they're real fun boating cups if you are a boater. Um, I don't know, they're just kind of fun cups to do. I like the shape. Fan of the shape. All right, there we go. We, so it looks like we've got all the details done. We've got a little epoxy left. That is okay. We are now going to torch this really quickly, just briefly. Right there. We're going to torch this just briefly to make sure there's no micro bubbles. I don't see any obvious bubbles. Uh, my epoxy, uh, sorry, my, my torch is getting a little bit wonky. It's cutting a little bit of epoxy stuck in it. I am wearing my chemical mask and my nitrile gloves. This is very important uh, when you're working with epoxy, especially when you torch it. You do not want to be breathing in any of that. Uh, you don't want to give yourself asthma or any kind of lung irritations or eye irritations. This can cause an allergy over time. So you want to just be real cautious when you're working with it. 
And again, all I'm doing here is making sure that none of the little micro bubbles. You missed the little spot there. All right, guys, there she is. She's all finished. Beautiful. Love it. Um, I love this cup. Uh, I usually look at these Pilsner's cups and see them as baseball bats. Uh, but this one looks absolutely beautiful. Um, I kind of paired, I wanted to do a shiplap tutorial for you guys. I wanted to do my smoky water, um, tutorial for you guys. Um, since I did, you guys had a request for that for uh, about a month and a half since you saw me do the keychain, uh, with the stormy seas sunset. So, I wanted to get this out to you, so I thought, why not pair the two of them together? So here we go. Um, you guys have the shiplap and you have the stormy seas um, tutorial all in one. Hope you guys learned a fun, some fun new tricks, and this inspires you to launch off and do some really cool stuff. And we'll see you guys on the next tutorial. Bye, guys.